Hello and welcome everyone to the 13th episode of Inside AMG where we have arrived at the letter M and M is going to be a topic that is very close to my heart, motorsports. Of course you know motorsports and AMG have been interrelated for as long as the brand exists. We have celebrated many successes over the years and lots of motorsports technology has made its way into our cars. Like for instance into the car that I'm sitting in right now, the Mercedes AMG GT Black Series. And in the last episode you've seen what this car is capable of when it broke the lap record for road cars on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. So today we're going to dive deep into the motorsports topic. We're going to meet two experts in today's show that are going to tell us everything about AMG's very own motorsports program. We've been running a customer racing program for the past decade and I'd say we go on, meet the guys and they'll tell you all about it. Hey Felix, Hi. good to see you. Good to see you too, how's it going? <laughs> All good, thanks. Very nice, very nice. Um, the people that are familiar with the topic motorsports probably recognize you, but why don't you tell us um, what you do at Mercedes-AMG exactly? Yeah, I'm Thomas Jäger, I was factory driver for Mercedes-AMG and DTM, and since 2010 I'm developing and coordinating the customer racing program. Thomas and I actually have a very special relationship because I used to be his intern back in 2016 in the in the motorsports um, in the motorsports team. Very nice times back then, um, and actually it goes even further back. I don't know if you were familiar with that, but back in the day when I was a little kid and I used to play on my console back at home, I always used to choose you in the racing games. <laughs> Great, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's talk about the cars that are in here. Absolutely amazing. I mean. Starting with this, the SLS GT3, that was sort of the, the, the stepping stone, the first stepping stone into the world of customer racing for AMG, right? Exactly, because when the SLS road car was uh, launched in 2009, we thought, hey, it's such a great car, uh, it should be on the racetrack. And then we thought about, should we continue with factory racing as in the past, or launch a new concept with uh, customer racing? And that's what we did. And um, yeah, it's a great product and a great concept until now. The shape of the car is still very recognizable. You still see it's an SLS, but there are definitely a few bells and whistles attached to make it a GT3 car, right? Of course, when we started with the development, we had a close look into the regulations and added, of course, a very big front splitter, a big rear wing for the aerodynamics. And of course, we also looked into the build quality. We mm -hmm. didn't only want to have the perfect race car, we also wanted to have a very safe and drivable customer racing car. And that's why we introduced, and this was um, first to market, this um, safety cell from Carbon. So it covers the whole body uh -huh. and gives you maximum security. That was a first back then. Exactly. So wow. in combination uh, with the adjustable pedal box and the moving steering wheel, this was, um, yeah, completely new. Usually you have an adjustable seat. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we took it over to the, to the other models to have the maximum or best safety standard on the market. Probably a lot of challenges you were, you were facing when turning this car into something that is very safe and bespoke for the racetrack. I mean, this is not an easy car. This is a very complex car. I mean, this thing alone is probably a nightmare to deal with when you want to turn it into a lightweight bespoke race car and such. True, yeah, I can remember well when we started the, the testing phase in uh, March 2010, when we thought, okay, what does it take to have a very competitive race car for the next five years? Because it's not only for one year. If you have a homologation period, it's several years. So we put all our knowledge from customer sports, from my past, also from factory racing into this product. And um, yeah, we won many, many races, so we can really be proud of this Mercedes uh, AMG. So five years go by, first five years of the AMG customer racing program, very successful period. And then the next car comes along. Of course, then we thought, 
uh, the new GT is coming. So what we can do with this car. It's a great car as well and we started quite early to put all our knowledge, our experience into the new Mercedes AMG GT3. Absolutely stunning. Um, I can remember the, the period 2016 I was actually as an intern closely um, intertwined within the development process of the car. I, I can really remember um, yeah, the struggles we had to go through, but the, the very high rewards we had in, in 2016 at the track. How was it for you that, that, yeah, that amazing year 2016? Yeah, it was really impressive because after all this uh, long days, long nights, uh, putting a lot of efforts into the development of this car, then to have the quadruple victory at the 24-hour Nürburgring in 16, that was re really amazing. I can, I can remember the days leading up to the race, very tense, a lot of things that need to be prepared. How do you pull something like that off, a quadruple victory? Like what, what needs to come together to achieve something amazing like that? Well, first of all, it's a product. Um, the product um, is very reliable, it's drivable. That's very, very important because on Nürburgring Nordschleife, you need a car uh, which you can trust, where you feel comfortable because it's uh, very slippery in wet conditions. You have high grip in, in dry conditions, day and night, you need good lights and everything. So the overall package of the car must be perfect but also teams and drivers need to work together in the best possible way. Otherwise, it's not uh, possible to succeed in motorsports. So looking at this car, like I said, with the SLS as well, this, the shape is very recognizable. You have to uh, attach, of course, many, many different parts to make it GT3 worthy and then fit for the racetrack. This might seem a little intimidating, a GT3 car like that, but you also got something for people that are, that want something a little more relatable, something a little closer to the street product, so to say. Of course, with the growth of the customer racing in general, um, the new GT4 series was introduced. And then we thought, hey, we have such a good uh, base car. We want to do something for GT4 as well. So we have the Mercedes AMG GT4 developed back in 2017, launched for 18. And this is a great car as well. Of course, fits to the regulations of GT4, but um, it was also very nice to develop this car. And as we've seen, um, the success in sales, uh, in sporting achievements is also very good. This is derived of the GTR. So, I mean, I see many, many different parts that remind me of the GTR. So um, actually not that far off to drive a GTR on, on the racetrack as a, as a regular person. You're probably pretty close to what it feels like to drive a GT4, right? Exactly, because the GTR is such a great road car that we didn't have to change so many things for the race car. So in the end, of course, you add all the safety things which are important. But other than that, engine-wise, suspension and so on, uh, it's really great. And uh, yeah, it was, was good to take over so many uh, road car parts. Mm -hmm. Mind if I step in? Have a try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is going to be very elegant. Uh, I can, I can detach, detach the steering wheel, right? Of course, yes. All right. This and is it's a great it sound, um, so this is really um, something also very uh, special for the Mercedes AMG cars. This is going to make it uh, also at least here a little we bit see easier. the safety cell. You can uh, move the pedals, you can move the steering wheel, and um, yeah, the ergonomic as aspect in the race car is very important. You have to feel good, you have to feel well in the car, especially when driving at night. Everything has to, um, yeah, you have to deal with it easily. And that's why our cars are so, um, yeah, accepted in the market and uh, why the results are so good. I can really see that. I mean, it, it feels, of course, very snug and cozy in here, but not that dramatically different from sitting in, in a GTR or in the GT Black Series. I mean, everything is where you'd expect it to be. And uh, actually, um, view in every direction is, is quite acceptable. So I can I could actually see myself driving this around the Nürburgring, maybe even at night. Have a try. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, that's what it's all about. <laughs> so the Mercedes AMG GT4 is not only a great race car, it's also a very nice track day car. I can so see we, that. Yeah, we're having many customers, they're trying um, this car on, on the track. It's, it's great fun and it's easy to use, which is also very important because mm -hmm. you go with your trailer to the track, have some fun and go back home. <laughs> nice, nice, amazing. 
So when we launched this car, we thought, okay, what would be next to stay competitive for the future? And um, our Mercedes AMG race cars always give an outlook to future road cars like the Black Series. And that's why what we can see is that it looks more or less similar. So we've put a lot of effort in improving a very good product. So um, we have a new aero concept here. Um, we have some things which are modified also for the engineers and for the mechanics, because that's also very important that during a race weekend, all the adjustments can be done very quickly and easily. And um, yeah, with the internationalization of the program, we went to America, we uh, then uh, developed the Australian market and then uh, went into China. So we are very happy that we are now all around the world very successful. A true success story indeed. So you already spoke about the close relations, not just in, in terms of design, but also in terms of technology between the race car and the road car. I mean, I can see the GT3 Evo definitely has its looks from the Black Series or vice versa, whichever way you put it. What about this car can be traced back to what you've gathered and experienced on the racetrack? For us, as we've seen, it's very important that the development in racing and in road car, um, more or less both departments benefit from it. Because as we've seen with the GT4, the base is the GTR, which is very good. And into the Black Series, all these findings were implemented. And we see here the very long front splitter. Um, we see here the, the fins on the side. We see the engine hood, which is um, close to the GT3. We see the Louvre, which also produces more downforce. So this is the closest road car to a race car I've ever tried. So I'm really impressed by the performance. Um, we had a test in uh, Hockenheim on Nürburgring Nordschleife and the lap times which are achieved with these cars are really incredible. It's so close to a GT3 and there you run slick tires. Um, it's really impressive. And what is special about this with a race car we are not allowed to do any changes during driving, but here we have an adjustable rear wing and that's a really cool stuff for a road car. Active aerodynamics, that wing is so impressive. I mean, just looking at it, but then actually knowing what it can do and, and how variable it is, absolutely, absolutely crazy. Amazing feat of engineering indeed. Yeah. It's very impressive what you did there. So I'd say while well, you guys take a closer look at the cars, um, we head on over to the production facility here and take a closer look at how the cars are actually made. Stefan, hi, <laughs> nice to see you again. Hi Felix, how's it going? It's going good, thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Stefan actually used to be my old boss at AMG, so why don't you tell the guys at home what it is that you do at AMG? Okay, I'm Stefan, I'm head of customer racing and I'm responsible for the AMG motorsport operations. So Thomas already told us a lot about the different cars that we have in the portfolio for customer racing. Now I want to see how they, how they get produced, how do they get made, what's the, what's the specialties about this facility that we're in right now? Let's have a look at where we are. Uh -huh. So uh, what we see, can see here is the heart of our AMGs. This is our uh, Mercedes AMG 6.3 liter natural aspired engine, which is uh, made in our plant from, uh, from Mercedes AMG mechanics, one man, one engine. And this is for sure the heart of our car. And, uh, we are here in our pre-assembly area where we took all the parts from the stock and uh, we make, uh, we prepare the, um, the, the pre-assembly for our cars, which we see later. So we have here the uh, steering column, the engine, obviously, and going further back, 
We can see something specific from our cars that we have the engine in the front, the gearbox in the rear means transaxle uh, principle, connected uh, with a torque tube and going back to the car to a six-speed sequential gearbox from Uland. And if everything is uh, proved and collected once, I think it's ready to get into the cars. It's amazing. I mean, the basic principle up until this point is identical to the regular GT. I mean, you got the engine in the front, the gearbox in the back, you got the torque tube in the middle. What is, what is bespoke GT3 about this setup? Yeah, on one end, uh, you try to make everything lighter. Mm -hmm. You know, you make it more aggressive mm -hmm. and you make a specific development for the race use. Mm -hmm. And uh, the biggest difference, uh, the engine and torque tube is uh, quite road uh, specific, but the gearbox is something specific. Mm -hmm. Because obviously our road car uh, gearbox is bigger uh, and it's made for starting and stopping and so on. And this is made to have, uh, uh, to, to get the maximum out of the drivetrain, so to be very efficient. Uh, and to be very light, to guarantee an overall car principle, a good uh, weight balance for front to rear of about 50-50. How do you achieve that lightness? Is it a special material that's in there or? Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. It's magnesium. This is magnesium? It is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Impressive. Not bad. How many, how many races can you race with one gearbox before you have to overhaul it? Uh, it's not about races, because you know you have different specific races. Uh -huh. One hour, four hours and 24 hours like we had the 24 Nürburgring just two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's made for a mileage, so this gearbox needs to be rebuilt after 10,000 kilometers, roughly. And then we overhaul it here in the workshop next to this, and then you can go again for another 10,000. Crazy. Everything happens in a very, very close perimeter. I mean, the, the engines get produced right around the corner, everything gets assembled here, overhauling happens here. Yes. That's pretty impressive. So how do we get this into the car? Here, you can see it. You can roll it. <laughs> <laughs> so we take a look further down the production okay. line? Cool. Let's do so. Awesome. Nice. So here it is. This is the production line? It is. This is the start of everything. This is the start of everything and this, I recognize, a GT chassis, that's pretty much the same one as in the production car, right? It is, at least the core of it. You see some cuts here and there, a different... Uh, There's a pretty big hole there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it's not centered, so it's not a, a roof window, it's a so-called roof hatch. Mm -hmm. So it's a security function topic ah. to get, um, in case of an accident, easy access to, to the driver's head uh, to remove the helmet mm. uh, before you take him out of the car. Yeah, Thomas already mentioned the very advanced safety concept of, of the GT3 and the GT4 car at Mercedes-AMG. Yeah. Good. What else, what else gets assembled at this station? Uh, here you can see uh, the biggest thing is um, the fuel cell. The and fuel cell, not the, the tank. Cell. All right. No, you see both. <laughs> Inside it's a fuel cell. And what ah. you can see here out of CFK, uh, it's, it's a firewall. Ah, it's, okay. uh, it's a sealed case for the fuel cell, which is also um, out of a kind of rubber, which uh, secures if the cell is damaged, that no fuel is coming out uh -huh. in, in, in the passenger, in direction to the passenger. So. Yeah, this looks pretty sturdy, I gotta say. I mean, this is just a huge block of carbon fiber. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It needs to be safe in, if, in case of a big crash and the car's rolling, so everything should be there and should be sealed. And theoretically, you could refill it from both sides, I see, right? Exactly. You only need to change the valvings and uh, the intakes, and then you can decide, depending on the track and the track layout, if it's going right ah. or left, clockwise, anti-clockwise. Uh -huh. So this is also where the mechanics are. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Awesome. That's fine. Yeah, that's pretty nifty. That's a very nice feature. And all the lines and everything are already in the car, I can see, right? Yeah, it's the lines, it's the air jack system uh, uh -huh. to, to, to jump the car for oh, the pit yeah, stops. Oh yeah, I can see it, yeah. And uh, obviously also all the electronics. Uh -huh. ECU, battery, the electric loom is installed together with the uh, steering column mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the ABS unit. Ah yeah, there I can see it. So pretty much what we see it's a finish of stage one of our production line. So all the innards, all the veins are in the car and then we move on from there. Stage two. Stage two. So this is very interesting. Absolutely, this is, this is the marriage. You saw um, our drivetrain pre-assembled. Mm -hmm. We talked about it before. And 
here it gets married to the car, mm -hmm. so to the chassis. It's crazy. When I look further down the line, and it, the last time I was here, I think it was roughly four years ago or so, and yep. all the cars were turned 90 degrees, and it was just one or, or two or three persons working on one car from start to finish, and now it actually looks like like a production line, like you shifted everything. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is. Uh, this was um, with with introduction of our GT4 car in 2018. We changed uh, the way how we assembled the car because mm. uh, you're right. Starting with the SLS and then also with the GT3 in 2016, uh, we had a single car assembly. Each workstation had two, three mechanics, and they assembled the car from the scratch, from zero to 100. And at the end, it was a quality check, and then it gets delivered to the customer. And uh, yeah, with, with more cars, because this line um, going through GT4 and GT3 cars. Even if this is not a full automatic system, so you can't see any robots, still it's a, a lean process and helps us. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine. And now here, when the marriage is done, like <coughs> how, ma how, many cars, how many cars do you get through that production line in a, in a certain period of time? Up to three cars per week. Three cars per week? Yeah. Wow, with that amount of actual manual labor that goes into their manufacturing, yeah. that's not too bad. The good thing, if you imagine that you always have a process in station by station, then uh, you can imagine that it's possible. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Pretty cool. Where do we go on from here? Marriage is done, and then we, we go, go to, to the next three. station. So this is it, stage number three. <laughs> yes, this, it would be. Okay, so, it would be. So there's no car here at the moment, of course. Obviously yeah. not. We put here bodywork parts on the car, the rear. We assembled also the, the cooling package in the front, the cooling package for the gearbox, mm -hmm. and uh, small minor things like this to get closer to mm -hmm. the next stage. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. But let's not talk much, too much about this here. I want to show you something very interesting, which is part of the bodywork, okay. to showcase uh, our lightweight concept. It's really impressive. Let's come up. Because here you see a door. I see a door. Yeah. Looks like a regular door, but it is, of course, carbon fiber. It's it's, it's so impressive. You, you can't believe. I mean, a regular car door. That's that's a hefty thing, and this is okay. <laughs> yeah. Have a look. <laughs> I mean, this is this is like a frisbee. I mean, how heavy is that? It's a heavy frisbee, but uh, let's say 14 kilos. 14 kilos. Not more. And I think one of the heaviest parts is uh, the window. Wow, that is really impressive. I mean, this is practically nothing. This is nothing for such a huge part. Absolutely amazing. Wow. Yeah, okay, yeah, that, that really goes to show that you take the lightweight business very serious. Yeah, but also the regulation allows us. You know, mm -hmm. the, uh, the door from this road car is quite, quite heavy. But uh, on the road car, the door is an integral fact to protect uh, the driver. Because uh -huh. the driver is not sitting in a seat cage. A cage mm -hmm. and uh, we we have Thomas told you about um, uh, a monocoque mm -hmm. where the driver suited in that's why this protects the driver mm -hmm. on top there's a roll cage and that's why the door is only to to close the car keep the weather out exactly <laughs> <laughs> wow not bad not bad really impressive it's pretty cool so now here we see all the bodywork is already pretty much finished yep at least in the rear Mm -hmm. So, and we concentrate to go to the front, but you see the guys here checking each sensor of the car and the mechanics uh, will put on the suspension. The underfloor gets mm -hmm. uh, integrated and uh, the complete front end with lights and aerodynamic package from the front. So here you can see mm -hmm. the front also suspension is already in. You see the beautiful engine with the uh -huh. air intake, air filter. Now everything yeah. comes together, together. Here's the air restrictor, right? Oh, this is a car, the part of the car which I hate most. <laughs> <laughs> it restricts the power, yeah, <laughs> it should go. It's unbelievable if you see such pipes. Uh, this is what the engine needs to, to breathe free, to, uh, to impress the, the maximum performance. But now we are forced from the regulation to, to breathe through such a hole. But it's what it is, and <laughs> we are not alone. That's uh, for the whole competition. Mm -hmm. um, but it's necessary to, to balance the competition. It's all about the balance of performance. Yeah. It is, and luckily we are on the side that we can get reduced by power. It would be, <laughs> would be a shame if we would need more. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, definitely. Yeah, so stage four, when that's completed, we get to the final stage, right? Yeah, and here you see also uh, that we are flexible with our cars. You see here the GT4 car. 
Coming from the GT3 to, to the GT4, yeah, that's that's yeah. also really impressive that you can just jump back and forth between cars. Yeah, it's it's for the mechanics also something that they not only do the, the single car, always do always the same work. So now the, here they collected a GT4 car, and here the car gets a, the, the finish. Mm -hmm. So all the setup work, um, we, we adjust the dampers, we adjust uh, the right height, um, the camber, uh, toe, and all those adjustments to provide our customers a good base setup that this car is race ready when it's delivered. I mean, it, it looks finished as is, so it pretty is. much I could jump in now and have a go, theoretically. The car got the quality check, so it's about you. Uh, I yeah. don't know if I got the quality <laughs> check. Yeah, I have to admit, I guess I've got to find out <laughs> someday. Okay, but yes, you can jump in, you can start it, um, and you can drive out into the trailer wow. to go to the next racetrack. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. I got to say, I mean, a lot has changed here since the last time I was here. I really appreciate you giving us this very detailed tour behind the scenes. Not, not a lot of people get to see what happens here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So there you have it, folks. AMG and motorsports. Those are just two topics that have always been intertwined. You can't say the one without the other. We have our roots in the realm of motorsports, have celebrated many successes over the years. And this year, as I've said, is the 10 year anniversary of our customer racing program. Thanks to Thomas and Stefan for, th for showing us around. It was a thrill today to go back to my old department where I started my career at AMG. And yeah, I hope you guys liked what you've seen. So don't forget to leave us a thumbs up. Also click the subscribe button, click the little bell so you get notified whenever we upload something new. And yeah, see you in the next one. Bye bye.